I know I have been overprotective of my children, maybe sometimes to a fault. They probably would tell you. Everyone was always just like, your mother's so amazing and cool and beautiful. But also she was super strict too, so I think we were all like a little bit scared of her. My kids haven't respected their curfew. I've changed the lock. And I just went, there are rules, and one day you may appreciate those rules. My name is Charlotte Ronson. I just turned 39. Born in London, but I grew up in New York. My name's Anne Dexter-Jones, and I'm born in Southport, Lancashire, in England. I don't give age, because that's a number, not because of vanity. I think, well, does that define me? There was one time I know with Charlotte. Charlotte walked by, and she had this cute body. She would got a cute body, and I pinched her on her hip like that. She had that little love handle. She was early teens, and I saw the look on her face. And that, that cut to the quick with me, that I, I affected her self-esteem. In that moment, I learned to tell them. I learned to be open with them, and when I felt they looked pretty, to tell them they looked pretty. So she wasn't always the most complimentary to our faces, even though, you know, she could go on and on and on and on and on about her children. And, but I think maybe that's how she was brought up too, that you don't necessarily, you don't want to give your kids a big head or this or that, or you want them to, to focus on the, you know, the inside and what's more important because that's what makes you beautiful or ugly anyway. I have three children from my first marriage and two from my second, but all brought up together. There's Mark is my eldest, then along came shortly afterwards Charlotte and Samantha, my twins. I dressed them in the same clothes, but I gave them different colors. Growing up even, my mother was always pushed or, you know, inspired us to know that it's, you don't need to be like everyone else and look like everyone else. They went through phases of wanting to borrow my clothes. My friends would come over and we would go into the closet and play dress up and things. And Charlotte's very particular. If we were going out shopping or whatever it would be, and you know, she wouldn't get it for us unless we loved it. And so I like could never say I loved something like that quickly. <laughs> Definitely went home empty-handed a lot. Whereas my sister's like, I love it, I love it. I sent them to schools that had uniforms, so there was no of I'm looking better than you each of them would do their own thing. Charlotte kind of rolled her sleeves up and rolled her skirt up and they developed their own style. I never learned how to put on makeup. I don't have the patience and I'm lazy. It's not because I'm thinking, wow, I'm such a natural beauty. She just doesn't focus on it or it's not a thing. She's never like, do I, you know, yes, do I look okay or is this? Or I'll be like, oh, your eyeliner is like over here. <laughs> you know, cause she's, she'll just like put her stuff on and, but that's like also part of her look. She, yeah. it's never like perfectly done. And I think all of us are a little like. Yeah. I would be like so impressed watching Charlotte put her makeup on. The subtlety of it. I would copy one or two things. Or I've suddenly rediscovered bright lipstick. My children don't like me in bright lipstick. I definitely had insecurities, and I, I still do. My dark circles are like puffy under my eyes. Even if I slept for a week, I'd still, you know, you just always look tired, or there's just certain things that when you look in the mirror, that's what you see. I mean, there's plenty of times I'd think, oh, I wish I had, the, I wish I was brave enough to do my eyes, you know, to get rid of the bags under my eyes, but, I have laugh lines that will come back anyway. I'm just happy with the laugh lines. And I said to them at 13, you're too young to smoke, you're too young to drink, and drugs are illegal. You're gonna have a job one day a week. And they said, but mommy, we're at school, we've only got the weekend. I went, oops. And they started to feel so good about just earning a few dollars. So. It was a matter of values. For their careers, I used to say, follow your dream, follow your passion. We got to start our lives that much earlier because we were pushed to find something that we love.
to do. I love watching her when she designs her clothes. Sometimes if I happen to be there and I see her working on fabrics and things, you know, as a parent, at times you can't, you know, it's like, oh, let's try this and that. But you know what? I respect Charlotte so much. Whatever she's doing is much better than anything I could suggest. My biggest wish for her, just for her to just find happiness and, and you know, find happiness for herself that we're all here and obviously family, but I think she's always worries so much about all of us instead of maybe taking that time to just focus on herself and, and complete her life. Mm -hmm. My children have been the most important thing in my life. I mean, I have other interests in my life, they come first. I'm just thinking unconditional love. That's a tough one because parents, I think, as, ooh, as a whole, there, I got excited again. My definition now after years of trials and tribulation, is taking away that judgmental part of me or the ego part that's inside me of my vision of them and just loving them, warts and all. Everything that's good about them, everything that's flawed, and everything that's a work in progress.